Hello, everybody, and welcome back into another post-game show here at the Hockey Raiders YouTube channel. And we're covering the Stanley Cup fi final as we did the last, first two games of the, you know, Colorado Avalanche go up to 2 nothing, dominate the, the Lightning in the first two games. And now we're in game three. The Lightning definitely had to have an answer game, and they did. 6-2 uh, to two, uh, final here. Uh, you know, the Stars came to play. Palat scored. Stamco scored. Uh, Paul, you know, the depth guys scored, Sorelli scored for the first time in like 13 games. Um, Landis got a couple goals in the power play, but that's all the avalanche can muster against, uh, Vasilevsky who had 38 saves, big bounce back game for him. Um, again, joined in by, uh, people we usually have on this post game show, Jim Bay, T Tampa Bay lightning writer and Kerry Collins who covers the avalanche. You know, we'll start with you, Jim. I'm Big bounce back for the Lightning. They needed it. And now this series is back 2-1. And the series kind of looks different now. I mean, you know, now they show that they can hang with the Avalanche. Or what was your impressions of this game? Yeah, well, it was definitely a big. It, 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 and honestly, it was a little bit shocking, um, mm -hmm. you know, especially the way Colorado no came out and dominated the first two games. You know, you would expect, you know, some kind of bounce back. but But the way they did it was, you know, really quite surprising. Um, and as you mentioned, they, they did what they needed to, you know, whatever went wrong in game two, they corrected it in, in game three with the exception of maybe taking too many penalties. Um, you know, that that is the one thing that will probably come back and bite them in the series if they continue to do that. I don't even like to see them play four on four. I feel that's yeah. almost like a power play <laughs> for the Avalanche. So they, they really need to, you know, to – you know, keep that a little bit better in line and stuff. But overall, it was great. Like you said, the stars came out. Kucherev um, had the nice pass on the Stamkos goal. And it was nice to finally see Tampa Bay try to get, you know, or, or get in front of the net to get shots and deflections and, and you know, goals. They went hard to the net. They put themselves um, there. And it paid off for them tonight. Will it for the rest of the series? We'll see. But at least, you know, for now, they're back in it. We've got a series and we're going to have some more hockey, which is always good. Yeah. Well, we're going at least five now. And when it looked like a sweep, <laughs> it's going yeah. to be a sweep after the first two. Um, Carrie, I mean, the avalanche, uh, everyone kind of thought they were going to just keep going. And the way they were rolling in game two, it looked like they were just going to run over the lightning. Um, what were your impressions of this game uh, now that they are in a series now? Yeah. I mean, we talked a little bit about this, how, you know, the last change and stuff was going to be sort of a bigger deal for Tampa Bay too, going back home. And I mean, that Sorelli line was great. Like, you know, they slowed those big guys down. Yeah. Atlantis God gets the two goals. Both those are on the power play though. And um, it just seems like right away when that Valerie Nachuskin goal gets wiped away and rightfully so it looked like it was offsides um that gave them sort of a little bit of a jump like all of a sudden like okay here we go like this isn't as bad <laughs> as we thought it was gonna be but I mean but it, it just seemed like they had a little more jam the four check wasn't as devastating for Colorado mm -hmm. as it had been in the last two games for sure and Tampa Bay's four check was night and day difference especially from game two and just for them to get you know, the couple of goals in the first period, I mean, if it's, even if it's one, one, I think maybe it's a little bit different, but all of a sudden it was just boom, boom. They scored those two goals less than a couple minutes apart. And um, really Colorado just couldn't get anything going outside of on the power play, which is nothing new if you've watched them in the playoffs at all this year. So it was kind of good that, uh, you know, Nobody wants to see a seven nothing game. Well, I guess unless you're an Avalanche fan, but yeah. it, nobody wants to see a seven nothing game at a Stanley Cup final. And, they can, and you thought they would come back and bounce back a little bit, and they certainly did. And the biggest thing was, I just thought that Sorelli line was great um, for Tampa Bay, and then uh, Vasilevsky looked like the guy we'd seen the last two years, mm. not the last two games. And you know, it, it it's a uh, it was, you know, it was, it's a pretty good bounce back game for Tampa Bay. And it's just going to be interesting to see how does Colorado respond now. There you go. And that's, that's what we want to see in this series is about, you know, back and forth. We, and 
that's what a Stanley Cup final shouldn't be. It should be. It shouldn't be just one team kind of dominating. Um, you know, Kerry mentioned the goaltending. Uh, we'll we'll go back and forth on this one, but uh, Jim will start with Vasilevsky. Uh, you know, he didn't look good in game two. Uh, seven goals against. Comes back in game three, and he is usually traditionally really good at home. Um, how did you feel about his game? I, did he look like Vasilevsky again? He, he looked better. Um, you know, I think there's still some concerning things about his play um, that you have to, you know, take a look at. And the fact that, you know, you, you know, Colorado really did score three goals. Hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you know, the one that got wiped out was a kind of an interesting goal. Mm. But he still gave up a goal on the blocker side, mm. um, and they're going to be shooting at that. The other ones, yeah, Colorado, much better effort. That's definitely what you want to see from them. He looked more confident. Um, they played better in front of him. But he's still, to me, not quite at the level that you want to see him. Um, you know, there's still some things I think they need. Mm. he needs to work out. And they need to work out for him if they're going to be much more competitive in this series. Um, you know, please, very pleased to see him bounce back. And I'm sure for his confidence, that's really good. But there, I think there's still a few other things, you know, that that he can improve on. But, you know, overall, everybody's got to be really happy about what he did. Mm. Well, he gave, like, again, the t- Tampa, the Lightning gave up 38 shots. I mean, that's still quite a few um, according to natural stat trick, they gave up 30, 38 scoring chances too, uh, to 20 for the lightning. So it's like, it, it still was kind of, it even it don't feel like that in the game. Um, there were apparently that many scoring chances. So they got to kind of limit that against them too. Um, carry on the other side, uh, the avalanche, they had to pull, I mean, they pulled Kemper, uh, and now, and Frank played the rest of the game. Here's a question for game for who do they start i mean this is not like a vasilevsky thing you're like well vasilevsky will start who starts the um, game four um i don't know i mean when you looked at some of the goals that uh you know there was i think two or three at least that kemper didn't have any idea where the puck was um yeah. for, you know i think particularly that fourth goal i think it was but I mean, he had no idea. He just didn't even see it. He didn't have a clue that it was even sailing past him. And <laughs> usually if they're screened, they kind of know what's coming. And that time he was just completely lost. So I don't know. It was not good for him. Like you've seen hit this happen to him during the regular season, not really during the postseason. And, you know, Francis comes in and he was actually not that bad. I, it, I mean, He gave up the power play goal, I guess. But that was another one that was kind of just – scrum in front gets lost Perry slams it in but mm-hmm. I mean I don't know like personally I just I, I would be surprised if they didn't start Kemper I would understand if they started Fred Sue's it's just mm-hmm. that Fred Sue's played a lot because Kemper's been hurt in these playoffs I mean this is the seventh game that he's played <laughs> in in the postseason he hasn't lost one yet but um you know this one was decided when he got plunked in there but <laughs> it was kind of I mean he's been he's been okay he's been pretty good during the playoffs but in some of those games against Edmonton yeah he did give up a few goals and I don't know I, I would be surprised if they went to Francis. I mean um you know but it, 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 at least he knows he's got a decent option putting a guy in there that's already played a substantial amount of time in you know in this series and been in the crease when they you know clinch the series against Edmonton and stuff so it's a good problem to have is two goalies that you trust but I would be surprised if it wasn't Kemper again yeah well I mean he has been the starter most of the year there's another of saying you know this is our guy let him try to bounce back because uh, he does deserve that much to have a game where he can, you know, attempt to do that. So uh, I would expect Kemper to start uh, game four as well. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, Jim, I want to talk to you about the injuries that happened during this game. Uh, Nick Paul, I mean, he got injured, still played, scored a goal, like right after he came back, like kind of gingerly went up to and scored it. Uh and then, you know, we, I thought he la- I was laboring throughout the rest of the game. 
who knows if he, you know, wakes up tomorrow morning and all of a sudden he can't play. And then on the and then Kucherov gets hurt with about four minutes left in the game, goes to the dressing room. Is this going to have an effect on game four? Will Kucherov, do you think Kucherov will come back? And does Paul even play? I guess we'll have to wait and see, um, you know, what or anything, if anybody says anything about their injuries after the game. Um, even tomorrow, you know, he, if he doesn't skate, that doesn't mean anything. Um, you know, Paul Kucherov, Brandon Point, Brandon Point mm-hmm. didn't um, play today. I guess, you know, that injury is still bothering him. So they're starting to mount up. And, um, you know, any, if not all of these guys missing would be, you know, disastrous for Tampa Bay, especially Kucherov. Um, he just sets the table up for, you know, so many different guys, um, you know, Palat and Stamkos and, and whatever that, that would be the real tough one. But, you know, I think they all would be real tough, but you got to love, you know, not just Paul and all of them, all hockey players who, yeah. you know, it, 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 you're going to have to, they're going to have to be dragged off the ice in order for him not to play. You know, they, they keep coming back. You know, if they don't play, it's because they physically can't, mm-hmm. it's not because, you know, they're going to nurse this or whatever, you know, but it's going to be tough. Um, and even if they're not a hundred percent, it's going to be really tough. So we'll have to see if it's, if it's something that, um, you know, lingers on into Wednesday night, or it's something that can be taken care of. And, and, you know, any, any one of those three guys um, can actually play through. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's the thing, like the Stanley cup playoffs are just, yeah, you'd have to drag these guys off the ice and I'll play a game because I, I don't know, Paul looked like he was he could barely skate uh, at times there. And I, you know, he ended up playing the rest of the time and he didn't have any, many, any shifts off. Uh, and he played, and I didn't think he was going to come back, really. I mean, he didn't look that good. And then Kucherov's uh, injury look, didn't look too good either. So uh, we'll see who plays. And Braden Point, like I say, he played the first, what, he played both first two games, yeah. and he's out in this one. And lots of key injuries. And on Colorado, Nazem Kadri's still not playing. And uh, who knows what other injuries are happening on their oh, side. Yeah, too, I mean, right? so. on that side, you look. Uh, who knew that Andre Burakovsky was like the yeah. glue for these yeah. guys <laughs> <laughs> through the first two games, you know, he blocked that shot and left uh, in game two late. It was, that was late in the game too. Like he blocked that shot off Hedman and um, you know, then he's not in the starting lineup or not in the lineup uh, dressing tonight. So that's kind of a big injury for a guy that had had an impact mm. those first two games, you know, and he's, he's listed as day to day and, but uh, on the other side, like you just mentioned about Kadri, he's also listed as day to day now. So mm. maybe he pops back in game four or five, who knows? And they could certainly use him, especially because a guy like Burakovsky, he got hurt against Edmonton. And it actually talked leading up to the finals, like, Hey, I'm finally getting over. <laughs> yeah. I finally feel like I'm back to a hundred percent on that, you know, with that injury. And then he, you know, blocks a shot that, you know, that sits, that stuff happens, but mm-hmm. um, I, that was a guy that was playing with a ton of confidence. You could just see it after that. He had like huge game one and then you, you could just see it in game two. He got another goal. And um, I think they kind of missed that guy in this game and he hadn't scored that much in the playoffs, but boy, in this series, he was making an impact. So at this time of year, everybody's hurt mm. uh, <laughs> or has people yeah. that are dinged up. But if you're going to be without Burakovsky and Kadri, that's completely different than mm. being out without Kucherov and Paul. Yeah, yeah. And along with Point, I mean, that's three key yeah. guys that uh, are out. And we'll see um, in game four who plays, who doesn't play. And uh, yeah, that's just the nature of the game in the playoffs now. And that's, that's when you get down to this many um, games left in your season. And we'll see. Um, adjustments. Let's talk about some adjustments for both teams. Um, we'll start with you, Kerry, with Colorado. I mean, now that the Lightning have looked like they can kind of keep pace with them, there were still times where they looked like they were, you know, whenever they Avalanche got some speed going, they still look like they were on their heels. Um, what does the Avalanche have to do to kind of bring that back, um, their strengths back that they showed in games one and two? Yeah, because when you look at, oh, geez, like, you know, it's hard to look at the game two and go, 
well, what do they need to do from here? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if, you know, do that again. That's what I, like, that's the answer, but <laughs> just do what you did game two. That should be easy, right? No, it just seemed like, um, I think this was more about Tampa Bay in this mm. game in particular, because Colorado still got off a ton of shots. Um, like one of the guys that I thought, and you know, might sound crazy because he didn't score a point. I think he was probably minus two was uh, JT Comfer was great in that yes. game. He just got completely hosed by Vasilevsky. <laughs> like, uh, I think there was four times he had that one where he made two saves on him. I think the only guy that had more shots on goal than Comfer was probably McKinnon in that game. And um they're getting those depth chances, even, you know, after I just said, you know, a guy like Burakovsky's out, they don't have a Nazem Kadri. Um, they had to mix a little bit up, move Lekin in, which I think kind of hurt both those lines, but what mm. else are you going to do? Uh, it just seemed like they're still getting those chances. The difference was Vasilevsky just didn't mm. give up the one softy that would sort of pump them, you know, mm. pump up their tires a little bit and get them going. And, it's a different animal when, you know, you can line up your guys against that top line and mm. McKinnon still going to probably get a half dozen shots and he had chances too. It was just, uh, I mean, if they're just going to rely on the power play, that's easy to shore up. I mean, you know, I, I just don't think, I think their special teams have been great. I think, well, Tampa was one for seven on the power play tonight and Colorado, I think was two for four. So, mm they have you know that in place it's just they got to get it by Vasilevsky even strength that's what they did the first two games and I mean he stopped all 30 shots even strength that he's faced tonight so I, I just think that they just got to keep doing what they're doing and hope on the back end they don't give up six <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the key right uh Jim on on the lightning side I mean they had a good game but of course there were times where they did still look like they were the slower team um, and you know, they still got to keep, keep pushing. And, and like one thing is the penalty kill still allowed two goals and it hasn't been very good. Uh, what type of adjustments do they need to make to tie this series, bring it back to Colorado tied? Well, the, the first adjustment is what they need to, are things they need to continue to do that they did tonight. And the first one is to not let Colorado get off to such a fast start. Mm. Um, they almost did with that first goal that got, you know, called back. But for the beginning, you know, of, of that period, they did a really good job of matching their energy. They're not going to match their c- speed. Mm. Stamco said this is the fastest team we've played um, and definitely that season, if not if not all of the playoffs. I'm not sure exactly what, you know, the, the quote was there. But, uh, you know, they're, they're going to have to also get better on those special teams. Like you mentioned, the, you know, the – the, the power play one for seven um, that's just not going to cut it. They've had plenty of opportunities, mm. you know, you know, tonight they got six goals and other games, they may not be so lucky. Same thing with the penalty kill. Um, you know, Colorado got their two goals on, you know, on, on their power play. So you gotta, you gotta kill more penalties and it's easier said than done because, mm. you know, Colorado is so talented and is so fast that it's really hard. I think one of the things that Tampa is now able to do is, you know, it, it's hard to go out and, you know, replicate in practice or anything else, the kind of speed that Colorado has, but now playing them, you know, one time, two times, and now three times that I think they're starting to get a little used to mm. um, what they can do. It's not, it doesn't mean that they won't be able to stop it. Um, as a couple of St. Louis players were quoted in an article you know, somewhere I read, like, you're not going to stop them. You just have to, you know, you just have to contain them. And they did that tonight and they're going to have to do that, you know, going forward um, if they want to continue to be in this series. Yeah. And that, and that's, and that's, again, is adjustments from both sides going into another game. And that's what the playoffs are all about. So we'll see which, which team does the better adjustments. That's, that's all it is. Right. Um, one guy I want to kind of throw I mean, Everyone hates Corey Perry. I mean, there's good reason because <laughs> how how annoying of a player he is. But now he's scored in four, what was it? Three straight Stanley Cup finals yeah. uh, and for three different teams, which is uh, pretty crazy. I mean, that's the first time, what'd they say? The first time that's happened uh, since like, I don't even know. I think that was the first time that's happened. 
So it's like, <laughs> we'll see if he can win a cup this time. <laughs> He's got a goal in each of the fi- last finals with different teams. But um, he was at his uh, annoying best to, today again. He scored a goal, was in, you know, got into those scrums at the end of the game. Uh, you know, before we end here, Jim, do you think Perry's kind of going to be starting to be that difference maker in this series? Uh, because, you know, he's starting to actually be more noticeable during games. Yeah, Corey Perry's the type of guy you hate until he's on your team. <laughs> you love the fact that he agitates the opponents, he gets under their skin, and he he gets those grind them out kind of goals because he's not afraid to put himself in front of the net. He's not afraid of physical confrontations, um, especially if something happens to either Paul Kucherov, mm-hmm. point can't return. He's going to be pivotal himself and, you know, Perry and Pat Maroon, who got, you know, a really big goal. It's, it's those veteran kind of guys. Maroon's kind of like a Perry light. He mm-hmm. can get under your skin too. He's a wily veteran. He, he knows how to push buttons and stuff like that. So definitely Perry with, with experience, he's been there, um, you know, tons, tons of playoff experience, tons of hockey experience. He definitely could be, um, you know, a big factor for the lightning, you know, going forward. And again, especially if, you know, some of these guys can't play or they can't play up to, you know, the, the, the level that, you know, we all know they can. Yeah. And you mentioned Maroon too. He's scored in like the last uh, three or four. That was one. That was the guy. It was the last four Stanley yeah. Cup finals he's scored in. Uh, you know, uh, that he's been in with the, with the Blues too. So um, he's been a pretty big part of these teams too. Uh, be interesting, Kerry, when uh, Kadri comes back because have a battle <laughs> with him with him and Perry because that's a little, yeah, he'll have similar to, style. He'll have to wait in line because Cogli- Andrew Cogliano was yeah. – well, he did it. He's, Perry put a B in his bonnet. He was like not very happy. I think he went to the penalty box two or three times and just as a direct result of Corey Perry antagonizing him. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, and that's a guy you can't, that's a guy they can't have in the penalty box. He's one of their best penalty killers, yeah. you know, and he's a threat for a shorthanded goal because he knows when to take chances. But yeah, Perry getting involved in that. And I think Perry needed more of that. I don't know if he'd scored in the last scored a point in the last yeah. five, three, four or five games. So I think he needs to be, you know, stirring some of that, stirring that pot a little bit just to get like him really firing on all cylinders because I mean, he gets the power play goal and mm. that was a big one. You know, uh, when you're sitting there looking at uh, Colorado, just, you know, has closed it up to, you know, or three to two and then they get it back to four to two and then they end up getting the power play goal like at the end of that period and stuff right out they've already got Kemper pulled and that one just sort of like totally slammed the door on the game I mean we've seen teams come back with from down three goals before um you know Edmonton did it heck against Colorado just about and so Colorado and I've seen Colorado do that this year too so you know that both of these teams are capable of that just because of the firepower Mm -hmm. and I mean, to get a power play goal like that, just boom. All right. It's four goals now. Good good luck getting seven on Vasilevsky tonight. You know, mm. that's really what that turned into. Yeah. And there was just no way <laughs> that, that was going to happen. But I think Corey Perry's better when he's playing like that. Same way with guys like Brad Marchand, you know, when mm. they're doing that stuff, they're better. They just flat yeah. out are. And this is the best game that Corey Perry's had in this series far and away. And yeah. You know, if they're getting that from that line, you know, we talked about it when we did the preview show. If they're getting that from that line, they're like, they're dangerous. That's a yeah. dangerous, dangerous team. Well, Perry was pretty good in the last game, too. I, he kind of he kind of started to get it, getting that, even though it was a 7 nothing game. There was times where he kind of got under, started getting under people's skin. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, other guys to step up, too, like Kalorn hasn't scored in a bunch of games. Uh, McKinnon now has gone three games without a goal in the Stanley Cup final here. Uh, he's got to start putting some goals in, even though he's getting t- the chances. But like they were talking in the broadcast, you know, the frustration starts kind of mounting for guys, especially when you start losing. And uh, so, I mean, you guys, like guys like Kalorn, who's been so key in Stanley Cup, Stanley Cup finals and playoffs, he hasn't scored in what? Well, they say 23 games or something, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was something like something crazy like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that's a key guy that's on power plays and, 
you know, regular. So we'll, we'll see who who's going to be able to break out those slumps because I mean, McKinnon's not that long, but <laughs> he's got to, he's got to start uh, getting some goals too. All right. Um, there's another post game show. I, you know, we'll see now it's a series and I, it's great because we want, I want to see a six or seven game series here. So uh, <laughs> it's good to have, you know, start having a series. We're going to at least five and we'll see what it is after game four. Uh, thanks, Jim. Thanks, Kerry, for coming on to the post game. We'll see everyone after game four. Make sure you're hitting that uh, or scanning that QR code that's on your screen right now. Go to the um, for a post game uh, wrap up for any articles are coming up, takeaway articles. Uh, we got free agency. We got the draft coming up very soon. So lots of stuff coming out on the site. Uh, definitely check that out. And we will see you after game four.